All right, let's write some lines and find some slopes and all that good stuff. All right, so on this one, we're just trying to find the parallel perpendicular slope. They were so kind to us, and they just straight up told us the slope was negative 5 thirds. Um, so let's keep in mind as the parallel slope is going to be identical, so it's just going to be negative 5 thirds again. Um, the perpendicular slope, the one that crosses at a 90, is going to do two things. One, it's going to change the sign, so we're going to go negative to positive, and two, it's going to flip that slope value to 3 fifths. Okay. I'm starting over. Uh, we have y equals negative 5x plus 1. Remember, this is y equals mx plus b. Okay, so the slope is given um, to be the, in the m position, the one that's in front of the, or the coefficient of x. And so m in this case is just going to be minus 5. Um, it might be helpful to think of this as negative 5 over 1. That's up to you. Um, the parallel slope is going to be the same. I'm going to write it as negative 5 over 1. Um, the perpendicular slope does two things. It changes the sign. It's going to go from negative to positive. And then we do a little flip a -roo. Um, That's why that 1 is super helpful, um, because it shows us if we should uh, have a 1 on top now. It's a quick exercise in finding slopes. Let's get to the good stuff. All right. Well, maybe eventually. OK. Well. Okay, there we go. Um, so we have to write an equation that's both parallel and perpendicular given the information. So this goes back to the principles. Um, we have to write a line. Um, that means we have to find slope. We have to find y-intercept. Okay, now, the first piece of information we're given is an equation. From the previous example, we know that we can just read the slope off of this. Um, the slope in this case is going to be minus 4. Okay, and we're given this point, and so we have a temporary x and we have a temporary y to work with. And so now let's go about the business of equation building. And so if we want to build a parallel equation, we should start with y equals mx plus b. Okay. Um, we know our temporary y value, just to help us solve for the new intercept, is going to be minus 2. Um, we know our slope value is going to be minus 4. Our x value is going to be 0.5. And then we're just going to solve for the b value by solving this equation. Okay, a quick step of cleanup. If I have negative 4 times a half, negative times a positive is going to be a negative. Half of 4 is 2. Okay, so if I add 2 to both sides, that means my b value is going to be 0, because negative 2 plus 2 is 0, uh, which means my equation has to be uh, y equals negative 4x, and then plus 0, which we don't really need, so I'll just leave it as is. Building the perpendicular, uh, much in the same fashion. Okay, we'll borrow the x, the y value, excuse me, the y value of negative 2. Um, we have to take the perpendicular slope. And so negative 4, we're going to change it to a positive, and then we're going to flip, the, flip it. So it's going to turn into a 1, 4. I almost said flipsies. We're going to flipsies it. Okay, we'll borrow the x value of 0.5. Okay. Um, now, in this particular case, it might be actually more useful to look at 0.5 in its fractional form. 0.5 is 1 half, and so I'm going to write it as just 1 half. And then, of course, plus b. Let's clean up. So negative 2, um, 1 fourth times 1 half, half of a fourth turns into an eighth. Um, in terms of multiplying fractions, you multiply top times top, bottom times bottom. Okay, And so we'll subtract off the eighth. Um, now using our calculator might be a little bit uh, more efficient here. 1 eighth is equal to 0.125. And so if we take negative 2 and subtract 0.125, we end up with negative 2.125, and that's going to be our b value, which means our equation um, is going to be y is equal to uh, 1 fourth for our slope, x minus 2.125. Okay, it's a decimal, no big deal. I guess you could write it as a mixed number if you want, 2 and an eighth. That's up to you. All righty. 
Uh, let's find the slope first. So I'm going to do the shortcut here, change in y and change in x. Our y's go from 5 to negative 1. That drops six values. 1 going up to 2, that's going to be plus 1 value, giving us an overall slope value of negative 6. Okay, temporary x, temporary y. Okay, so let's build equations. Okay, um, the slope value, remember we're going to take the exact slope value um, because parallel means the same slope. Okay, the x value is going to be minus 4 plus b. All right, let's clean up. Um, negative 6 times negative 4, well, two negatives make a positive. 6 times 4 is 24. So subtract 24 on both sides. Um, the b value is going to equal negative 25. Okay, so building out the equation, yeah, we're going back to x's and y's using negative 6, the same slope as we started with. Um, x, of course, and then minus 25. All right, building out the perpendicular equation. Well, the perpendicular slope is the opposite reciprocal. So negative 6 turns into a positive number. 6 flips into 1 over 6. Okay, barring our y value of negative 1. And our x value of negative 4. Okay, so we have negative 1 is equal to negative 4 over 6 plus b. Okay, so using our, using our calculator... Um, 4 over 6 is just 2 thirds. And so if we take negative 1, and then we add 2 thirds, okay, um, we end up with negative 1 third. So building out our equation, we have y is equal to 1 over 6, the perpendicular slope x, uh, minus a third. Now, if you want to express that in decimal form, that's fine. I'm going to leave mine in fractional form. Okay, so one more in this set. Let's find an equation off of a graph. I'm sorry, let's find the parallel and perpendicular equations off of a graph. And so we still need slope. We still need y-intercept. So, building out the slope triangle, change in y is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, it's going to, please take note, it's going to be a minus sign because we're going down 9 values. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, we have the change in x to be plus 6. Okay, so, we have change in y over change in x, which is our slope. We have negative 9 over 6, which reduces, they're both divisible by 3, and so that's going to be negative 3 over 2. That's a mere slope. Okay, so building up our equation. So y is equal to mx plus b. We need a temporary x and y. Okay, so we have one here. Um, this value looks like it's going to be 0, 0,3. All right, so uh, we borrow the 3. We have the slope of negative 3 over 2. Borrow the x of 0 plus b. Anything times 0 is 0, and so that means our b value is just 3. So our parallel equation is going to be y equals negative 3 over 2, x plus, oh, plus 3. Now, of course, we could have predicted that because a point that you were given is precisely the y-intercept. It's crossing the y-axis at 3. So we probably didn't even have to do that calculation. We could have just imported it to be 3. Okay, in fact, that's what we're going to do in this next one. So y equals mx plus b. We have to get the perpendicular slope. So 3 over, negative 3 over 2, okay, becomes positive 2 over 3. We're going to change the slope, or I'm sorry, change the sign to a positive. 
Okay, and we're going to flip the, uh, the slope fraction, uh, making it 2 over 3. Okay. So substituting in our temporary values, 3 is our temporary y, 2 over 3rd, our x is still 0 plus b. Well, anything times 0 is 0, and so b is just going to be 3. So our perpendicular equation is y equals 2. Whoa. So it was too much here. That's what's going on. Okay. So y is equal to 2 over 3x plus 3. Man, that is messy. But there it is. All right, guys, that completes our second pass through the review. Um, at this point, hopefully these problems are feeling very comfortable, right? Like you're feeling good about them. And so at this point, um, I would say that you're somewhat prepared for the exam. If you want to be really prepared, you got to do all the last problems, right? The, so one last pass through. Um, it would actually be a pretty good idea, depending on what day it is for you. Um, if you're sitting here on a Wednesday night, I'm not going to to take a break. Like maybe not do the rest right now. Give your brain a, a chance to kind of absorb what you talked about, um, and this way, maybe you come back Thursday night and you finish these last problems the day before the exam okay? or something to that effect. It's really up to you. Um, but if, I, if this were me, um, I would do at least a third of the problems Wednesday, like during class time, whatever, because um, remember, we're not meeting tomorrow. Um, I would do another third, like Wednesday night, and then I would do my final pass Thursday night. That way it's nice and spread out. Your brain is kind of hitting it over and over again, and you get that one last reminder before the test. But it's up to you. Okay, I'm going to go now, re I'm going to go back to the beginning of the review, and we're going to do the last set and then, last, and then these last three videos. So I'll see you there. Thanks.